Today we're gonna talk about composition. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Today I want to talk to you about composition. I feel like in the last two months or so, I really have gone through a process of improving my composition in my paintings especially. Uh, and what I want to do is kind of share with you one batch of works that uh, is a little older and I feel like still I haven't gone through these concepts and then a batch of newer works, okay? Uh, and that way you're going to see the difference. I'm also, also going to talk just a bit about um, the the process I used to do that. Okay, so this is what we're gonna uh, look at in just a moment. And again, I'm really just learning this these stuff and so I'm definitely not an expert, but I think it can be helpful um, to see how I how I learn it and filter it and, and process the information and just the output, the results, the paintings. Okay, and on that note, also I wanna tell you, uh, I wanna wish you a happy new year if you're celebrating. I'm gonna talk about that in the outro of this video, okay? So let's change the angle and get started. Okay, so we're gonna start looking at some paintings. We're gonna start with this batch. Uh, and later on we'll look at another one right here. Uh, this one shows paintings that I definitely think I could have done better in terms of the composition, okay? And I'm gonna show you and explain what the main differences are. So with this one, the first thing that pops to my mind and it just seems kind of obvious to me is that it's very zoomed in on one thing and it makes you kind of feel trapped. There's this main building and it's just so close to us uh, as the viewer and the arrangement on a macro level just isn't good enough and within that arrangement that could have been a little improved uh, on top of this the elements themselves don't sit that well for example this car touches the edge of the of the of the canvas basically um, and it just doesn't feel right i think um, the thing that finally enough does work here uh, is I think the the colors so there's a bit of red here in the shadow that I hope you can see but I'm I'm not sure you will be able to see that and that kind of negates the blue here in the shadows there's the the composition of in terms of watercolor is good there's the uh, dry brush here a little uh, wet and wet there uh, but in terms of the arrangement of stuff it's not as good as it could have been and this is not like a, a really bad example I'm gonna show you so for example this one um, this kind of crane forget about the the painting itself not being as good there's just it's it's just not structured well you have this crane here and it's a bit to the side then kind of um, moves upwards and gets cut off the scene this is just me misplanning uh, the whole thing uh, there is uh, a very um, too much equality between the two sides here you have this one and and this one and because there's the building here it kind of feels like it's just two paintings it's just you can divide it to one and two um, and it's not that I mean it is obvious that this is the center of attention but it just doesn't work well as one okay and that's to set aside all the other mistakes I did here uh, color is not interesting but we're not gonna focus on colors as much so this one as well, This there's a video uh, of this process as well. Uh, I think there's a really good abstraction here, but other than that, notice where the awnings are in the, in the street uh, is somewhere around here and it just gets cut off. Again, not leaving enough space, not planning well enough. Another thing, uh, this part that is kind of the center of attention in many ways because it's the, uh, the edge of the building is on the dead center of the painting. I could have moved it a little to the right maybe get rid of this part and just kind of end it here and that way I can lead the viewer inside from that and into the painting uh, by getting the car here better and and not cutting off the lower part okay so it's just this one in terms of the height doesn't sit uh, as well as I'd want it to uh, so this is a good example of something that I uh, got like accidentally I got a good composition and um, and I wanted to include it within this because I wasn't planning it and I knew that I did a good job with this one but now I understand or better understand why um, so there is I think a really good just division of space here you have this uh, building that's a little more shiny it comes forward 
better than we have this one. More in the shadow, more obscure, more blurred. Uh, the arrangement of people is pretty good. I think this one needs to be a little more there, but then I have the car, so that's another problem. But it does feel like you're uh, a little more invited into the scene. So this is a good example of just by pure luck getting some things right, okay? Let's look at another one here. So this is an example of one that I almost had enough luck to nail it, but what bothers me with this one is that the center of attention that is this, I think it, it feels like the painting is split uh, or maybe runs towards the edges of the canvas. So we have this building here that's kind of in the foreground, extreme foreground, and it's way to the right. And then we have this area that's really nice, but that's a bit more to the left and maybe just bringing them a little forward could help. We have this person here that we don't see uh, the bottom part uh, of his body. It could have been probably placed a little better. Um, I do like the way the people are spread across this scene. Um, and this is again a, an example of me kind of getting lucky and, and nailing the composition to some degree but still not not a very good example. Um, but the, the really the, the more typical type of paintings I would get is these. This is just too zoomed in, okay? So now let's drop this one to the side and, and bring the ones that I think are an improvement, okay? So with these ones I really wanted to uh, put a lot of work into the composition and I really carefully planned things out. Uh, before I even show you these, let's set this aside. And I just want to tell you how I approach these, okay? So what I would do uh, is take a look at the scene and this is how I would sketch it already when I was gonna paint it, okay? So I would have the, the, the watercolor paper like that and what I would do is look for interesting elements in the view. So let's imagine that this is the landscape itself. So I see this building and I see it, you know, as a whole and it's very large, it's not just this crop. But in any case, maybe let's place it like that or maybe not, uh, but in any case, so I looked at this and this building looked interesting, the edge of the building looked interesting, so what I would do is forget about where it's placed in the reference, I would just place it wherever I see fit and the simplest rule I would follow is the rule of thirds like I taught you in a very old video about composition, so I would just place like kind of a guideline here, okay, and then uh, I would want to cut this in a um, uh, vertically in a way that's not equal as well, so not here, but rather here, and maybe this will be the horizon line, then I know the building ends, maybe let's not divide this space into two equal parts, but maybe move it a bit upwards, and then we have this, and already it starts to feel like something. Then the edge of the building, let's divide this space not equally, but rather move a bit to the left, and then <clears throat> we have this space here, this ignore that, that's just a part of the, the frame um, and then I would divide that one again unequally okay so this part isn't equal to that part um, and that way you just start building it up and then this is the edge of the building so uh, and, and it's what you see here and I would actually build the shape of the building itself go along with the uh, perspective here really rough of course so <laughs> don't expect it to be fantastic then we have that additional building here and you know and it just starts to get built up and then there's the car here that's kind of the focus of, of our attention and I knew this because it it was very shiny so I decided I'm gonna place it somewhere around here not directly on the edge of the building but maybe somewhere around here and 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 you see I just slowly divide the space into interesting components and then I just pluck in there what I see in the reference okay so this was the process I used for most of the paintings you're gonna see here Okay, so once again, I just took the, the watercolor paper, found an interesting element and just placed it somewhere. And then I placed its edges somewhere. And then I kept on dividing the space in a way that will be interesting and inspiring and not boring. And that way you just get a very interesting um, division of elements and you just get a movement around the canvas. Okay, so. Uh, this was basically the rationale or what led me uh, when working on these, okay? So bear that in mind. Now let's zoom in just a tiny bit so you can see more of the details. Okay, so here we go. So this is the first one and I kind of show, showed you how I did it. Uh, I think everything works here compositionally, okay? Maybe I could have just made everything a little higher, but other than that I really enjoyed. There's the contrast of that person with the shadow. We have the well-lit sides of the buildings. We have again, nothing is in the dead center, the car is to the right, then we have another secondary kind of car, doesn't take too much focus. 
we have the tree here that leads to an interesting contrast and and an important part of that is that the entrance to the scene is open we don't have a car stuck in our face like right here uh, prevents us from entering the scene okay so this is an important part um, this one I really enjoyed it uh, and I felt bad for not recording it let me zoom out a bit so with this scene I chose a bit of a different approach uh, you can see that uh, the main part of the building is in the center and even the motorcycle but what's interesting to me here is the composition when it comes to the vertical uh, dimension so what you get here uh, is the motorcycle is in an interesting position I think uh, the heights here are built really well and kind of avoid the centers this balcony is kind of in the center but not exactly and then we also have the edges that conform we have that building uh, to the side and then this edge uh, we have this um, this street light with the sign nothing is again the sign isn't like dead in the center it's to the side it just creates this interesting uh, maybe movement maybe you know um, uh, circular motion of the eyes uh, and I think this works really well, even though the, the main structure is in the center. So it is possible to have it in the center, but you just have to uh, regard the other components and build it accordingly. Another good thing uh, that I did here is the rich shadows. Okay, so very rich shadows. Uh, definitely, f this is definitely far from where I want to be. I, I still aim really high and I, all of these paintings basically I know that I can do so much better but just really showing you the one aspect of composition and how it improved over time uh, so let's continue here so here we have another interesting example and the reason why is that this one is kind of the uh, opposite of this one uh, because here the painting itself isn't that I wouldn't say it's that good the drawing wasn't good to begin with but the the composition is so that's a funny thing um, the way I got these all of the details in uh, even what I chose as a center of attention isn't that good what works well here is the placement so that I have these two kind of entrances to the court uh, to the uh, maybe yard or the uh, small garden outside of that building. Uh, so that works really well. There's the sign here that was actually there. So I'm not plucking those in just for uh, entertainment uh, value. They're, they were actually there. And we have that, although there's nothing wrong with putting stuff for entertainment value. So there's this building here. And it's like I didn't get the impression of things really well, but the composition is nice. There's this light shining through dark part in the foreground, dark part in the background, uh, strong cast shadows. So composition wise, this one works for me. Another thing that works here is notice how I created the greens really separately and used pure colors. You can see a little bit of hint of yellows here and there. There's the pure green, there's blues, browns, and it all kind of mixes together. Uh, it contrasts nicely with the heavy kind of muted shadows here. It creates this area that's uh, more well lit and it's like it's hit directly by the sunshine uh, so this is a good one in terms of composition not a good one in terms of execution and the painting but definitely the composition works well at least in my mind uh, next we have this one and this is interesting so this one I wasn't I will admit I wasn't paying too much attention to the composition although there are some good parts here for example the division of the the uh, sky and land perhaps um, the the placement of the car is just ever so slightly to the right and the weight of the of the of the highlights is uh, moved to the right with the also the the backlights here um, but the thing I do want to direct your attention to and this is something I wouldn't have done in the past is I finished with the car and even the the ground and then I was like okay so this is just for fun I did this one basically really quickly uh, I kind of lost a lot of light here I should have kept this part a lot uh, significantly lighter but in any case the thing I did here was going with the warm uh, tones for the sky and this is something I wouldn't have done in the past I would just kind of choose a color and go with it but with this one I deliberately decided I'm gonna warm it up as much as possible because I want the car to uh, to feel very separate from the, from this background okay so we have kind of a color composition here not necessarily the composition I was referring to in the beginning but I did want to include that as an example because the composition can come in many different dim dimensions I guess uh, here's another nice example that um, I really enjoyed producing uh, again definitely a lot to work on but notice this we have uh, three main trees 
Uh, one of them is more spaced than the other ones. Uh, there's this bench here that is barely visible, but still kind of is visible, and it opens up the gap between these two, so that works out quite nicely. Uh, notice how there's some very dark trees in the background, and this one especially, it, it doesn't just come out of the bench. This is important, and this happens a lot, happened a lot to me in the past, happens a lot to beginners. You kind of just place the, the tree over an element or maybe in the dead center of an element and here it just moves to the side a bit and I think this works really well. Actually looking at this about two or three weeks after doing it makes it look even prettier to me now so that's pretty cool. Uh, the sky was a bit of a challenge because I didn't leave enough room in terms of the height uh, but still a very good one that I'm quite proud of. Next up let's change uh, the angle a bit so you can see all of this one. Okay, so I zoomed out a bit. Uh, this one is, <laughs> I really enjoyed making this one. I'm not really sure what I think about it overall, but what I can say is that uh, the composition does work for me. Um, the placement of the major elements is pretty good. I think I may, uh, I would have moved this one a little to the left. Uh, maybe add a person closer to us, but that was a bit of a problem logistically. And if you would have seen the place I painted this at, you would understand it was just, it was a bit of a complex place to paint at because people were passing by and I didn't have a lot of space. But in any case, there is some spacing that helps you get into the scene. Could have been better, but there is some of that. We have the building here a bit to the left. Uh, the, the horizon line or maybe the division between the top and bottom kind of rests at the center but not exactly and then we have this building so it's a bit of a, it's not like equal three parts so like one two three it's more of an upwards focus so i think it does work and then we have all of these uh dry brush over the the background that that kind of brings it forward uh so a decent one not not my best but i think composition wise it works much better than the older ones at, at the very least and lastly, we have this one, so let me zoom in a bit. So believe it or not, this is actually what these trees looked like when I looked at them. Um, this painting also has a hint of luck. While working on it, I wasn't really um, that impressed. I thought I actually royally messed up, but then after taking some distance from it, the one thing that I noticed was that the light and shadow here is really good. It's interesting. It's actually interesting. Um, we have this very dark tree in the shadow, then this light one over a dark background. Now, I could have pushed the contrasts a little more, but I think it does work really well. The greens aren't completely boring, so there are some different uh, colors and values in them. Uh, but again, I want you to pay attention to the composition. So we have uneven spaces between the trees, and even with the trees in the background, notice how this tree kind of leans towards closer to this one. Here it's kind of in the middle, but just a bit to the to the right. And this tree, very subtle to the left of this one, doesn't take up too much attention. If we'd have strong highlights on this one, it would uh, really take away from the focus. So uh, with maybe just a hint of uh, a luck, I got this to work somehow. Uh, also the heights, um, I think it's divided, not in terms of, there's not a lot of interest in the tree's heights, so maybe I could have made these two a little lower hanging and this one leave it tall, um, <clears throat> but definitely at the bottom I think I did a good job, because if they would all end in the same line it would look super awkward, because it, it just doesn't happen, it doesn't happen in real life, so uh, it, they have to end at different spots. Um, and also just the way the trees fit the scene I think works really well with this one. So again, I was a bit lucky. So I think like the best example to really uh, express the difference is between these two. Uh, just there is a lot of a large difference between them and how I approach them and how I and the thought process behind it. Uh, actually, my favorite one is this one, uh, funny enough, but uh, if I have to look at the you know what, yeah, in terms of composition as well, this one is my favorite. I really like the way it turned out. Uh, so in any case, I hope that was helpful. Uh, we talked about uh, the paintings that weren't working as well. Then I showed you how I approach making these different ones. Uh, even with the trees, you can, you can do the very same exercise. And I have this sketch that I started working on. Uh, you have the kind of the paper and then you start dividing it. So the, the main tree is not in the center, maybe a bit to the right. 
then you're left with a problem because you have less space here. So you can kind of place another tree here, maybe another one to the side. And this is basically what I did here. You can see there's, um, then we have the land and the sky. Maybe the trees, you want them to end somewhere around here. Maybe this one should end a little lower as well as this one. Uh, in terms of the height here, they should be shorter. And then we have kind of one tree. And notice how they move to the side a bit, which adds a bit of interest. And this was how they were in real life. Uh, then we have this one, ends a little higher. Then finally we have this one with a stronger angle, maybe leaning towards the ones in the middle. We have the tree tops right here. And then we just keep adding some more details. We have the tree in the background there, another tree kind of here, and then another one. And you can see how it slowly builds up uh, in a very abstract manner, but still then you can base your painting on that. Okay, so uh, at the very least, and I'm not, again, I'm not a big, um, I'm not like the, where I want to be in terms of composition at all, but at the very least, I hope this video gets you thinking more about composition, okay? If not, if you didn't maybe learn how to, maybe at least it will put it uh, in a more important spot in your focus, okay? So, um, so this is it basically. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these paintings and everything. I'm gonna change the angle and wrap up this video. So thank you for watching and again at the very least I hope this video gets you to think more about composition and maybe devote a little more of your focus and attention to that because ultimately it's a very important component and even if you're very good at the technique uh, of watercolor or sketching or anything like that, um, if you don't place things in a way that's pleasing to the eye, you're kind of, it feels like maybe you cut a very uh, particular part out, out of a better work that could have been so much more. Okay, so this is why I think it's really important to put a lot of focus on that. And the good part is that even if you do, uh, if you do painting like me, uh, you can practice this very rapidly because you don't have to actually create a full-fledged painting. You can just have a sketchbook with you, look at the scene and kind of practice translating it into a, a good composition. And you don't have to paint every scene you do that with. You can just do that as a practice, as a separate one. And then after you're pleased with one of the compositions, turn that into a painting. So you can practice this very quickly. And, and as you saw with um, some very minimal and abstract components and you start to get an understanding for that after a while. And again, I'm really just learning these stuff and I hope you can find value in seeing how I filter what I learn and seeing the improvement I go through. I hope uh, that it will be really cool to go back to this video maybe in a year or two or three and, and think, wow, this, I've, been, I've gone through such an improvement. And then we can even compare and see um, what improved further more down the line uh, as I continue to learn new things. So anyway, this is it. I want to thank you so much and also wish you a happy new year. It's really coming really soon. Um, and I will um, talk to you again in another video on Tuesday. Um, I'm going to talk about a few things, um, a few of my plans for uh, 2018 and also my Patreon page, which I revived. So uh, I'll definitely uh, put a link in the description box and I'll, I'm going to talk a bit more about that on uh, Tuesday. <clears throat> and yeah, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't and follow me on Instagram and Snapchat. And um, don't forget also to check out my podcast in the description box below. And I will see you again in another video on Tuesday.